So, I just watched the new Smurfs movie. Don't ask me why it was recommended to me, but guess what happens? multiverse. Because apparently in 2025, movies need at least 17 different timelines or else audiences might, I don't know, fall asleep. To me, this feels like what the butterfly effect was like 10 years ago. Remember that? Every second movie was like, what if this small choice changed everything? And now that's the multiverse. It's the new Hollywood buzzword. Which brings me to an even bigger question. When did the multiverse stop being an interesting science concept and start to become a Hollywood cheat code? And what even is the multiverse and does it actually even really exist? So buckle up strangers of the internet because if you stay tuned in this timeline you might find the answers at the end of this video. Let's be real, as an avid science enjoyer, I'm never mad when concepts from physics make their way onto the big screen, especially when it's done in a spectacular and interesting way. So let's get the positive out of the way before it haunts us through the whole video. Everything Everywhere All at Once didn't just throw the multiverse theory at us as a gimmick. It built an entire emotional, chaotic and strangely beautiful story around it. By that I mean it's everything, a family drama, an absurd kung fu hustle, a serious and deep science fiction movie, a lighthearted comedy, a cosmic love story and a deeply philosophical movie that makes one reflect on the life and the meaning of it all. Whether it really excels at each of these is up for debate, but I think no one can argue that it was a truly inspired and visually stunning movie that kept you captivated until the last minute. And speaking of visually captivating, I still remember sitting in the cinema when Spider-Man and Doctor Strange first crashed through the multiverse. Those three minutes falling through different realities, cartoon universes, fractal dimensions were some of the best visual storytelling I'd seen in years. For a moment, the multiverse really did feel infinite in both possibilities and creative opportunities. And yeah, Across the Spider-Verse was a masterpiece too. The animation, the styles, the sheer energy of it. It proved the multiverse could be more than just a plot trick. It could be art. But here's the thing, not every multiverse movie is Spider-Verse or everything everywhere all at once. For every inspired take, we're getting five more that feel like copy and paste. And while some of these takes are fun and nostalgic, others are just lazy shortcuts. Ways to resurrect dead characters, reset franchises or stitch together messy timelines without actually fixing them. It's like Hollywood discovered a cheat code. Press start, open the multiverse, and suddenly nothing has to matter anymore. And when nothing really matters, it becomes a problem. Let me try to explain the multiverse in the most easiest way. Imagine you are sitting in a car and you turn on the radio. All around you, there are hundreds or thousands of broadcasting stations, but you're tuned into only one channel. That doesn't mean all the other radio broadcasts disappear, you're just not tuned into them. If we want to understand how this works at such a large scale like the universe, we have to look into the smallest scale, quantum mechanics, first. At the smallest scales, particles like electrons exist in something called a superposition, meaning they can theoretically be in multiple states at once. It's kind of like Schrodinger's cat, until you check the box, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. For an electron this could mean being in two different states, say spinning up or spinning down at the same time. But when we measure it, we only ever see one outcome. So where does the other possibility go? In 1950s, physicist Hugh Everett proposed the many worlds interpretation. Instead of the electron choosing one state, the universe itself branches. In one branch, you observe the spin up. In the other branch, that's just as real, you'd see the spin down. And because quantum events happen constantly across the universe, this branching wouldn't just happen once in a while. It would be happening all the time, everywhere. According to this view, every quantum event, every particle interaction creates a new branch of reality. We're tuned into just one of them, like a radio station, while the others continue beyond our reach. It also kind of takes the agency aspect away if you think of it in that way. It's not your personal decision of whether to eat or not eat the cookie that branches the universe. It starts at a much smaller scale and much earlier. But that's not the only way scientists imagine a multiverse. Zooming back out from particles to the entire cosmos, there's also the idea of eternal inflation. This theory was proposed back in the 1980s by physicists like Alan Goth, Andrei Linder and Alexander Wilkin. Space itself could still be inflating, like an endless cosmic bubble bath. Each bubble at the corner of our universe could become its own universe, with its own laws of physics. Our universe would just be one bubble among countless others that were created after the Big Bang. Some of these bubbles might look a lot like ours, others could have different particles, different forces, maybe even different numbers of dimensions. Most would probably be sterile, but a few might be teeming with stars, planets and maybe even life. So depending on which theory you follow, the universe is either branching at a quantum level every second or bubbling and expanding at the corners of our universe. Either way, the core idea is much the same. What we call an experience as the universe might just be a slice of something much, much bigger. 
I accidentally deleted all the other footage, which is why I'm in a new outfit and it's a new day. But don't worry, we're still in the same script. This is not another universe. Now that we have an overview of the science, the real question is how these ideas from quantum branches to bubble universes leaked into pop culture and morphed into blockbuster bombs with infinite versions of characters. The idea of parallel worlds and alternate realities started to appear soon after the scientific groundwork was laid. The sci-fi genre in the 60s and 70s just ran with it, imagining parallel worlds and alternative histories long before Hollywood caught on. In comics, DC was actually one of the first to formally show this. In A Flash of Two Worlds from 1961, Barry Allen meets Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash from another Earth. That was an early explicit example of a parallel Earth. Around the same era, Marvel Comics also started exploring the concept of alternate realities. In issue of 103 of Strange Tales from 1962, Johnny Storm of the Fantastic Four is teleported to an alternate reality for the first time in Marvel history. By the 80s, decades of comics meant conflicting storylines, different writers and characters that didn't always line up. Fans wanted coherence, but publishers didn't want to erase old stories either. The multiverse solved that problem. It let multiple versions of characters and timelines exist at once. Marvel labeled its main timeline as Earth-616, first in Captain Britain and stories, so alternate universes could clearly be defined around it. DC had also spent years building multiple worlds, but the stories had become so tangled and it was hard to find consistency between all of them. To fix that, DC launched Crisis on Infinite Earths, a sweeping crossover event aiming to collapse many Earths into a single new universe with consistent history. The story was a major success, praised for its ambition and emotional stakes. Yet, even as it simplified things, it also made the multiverse idea stick. Once you've seen universes clash, the image stays with you. That might have been one of the first points where the multiverse went from messy comic lore to a legendary storytelling device. With the rise and success of these big franchises, studios discovered that the multiverse offers a major get out of restraining orders free option. Bring back old characters, do crossovers, reset things without completely killing off a franchise. Nostalgia has always been a huge selling point. People love seeing old versions of characters, old villains, even old actors. The multiverse allows all that, while giving some excuse for retcons, time jumps and alternate timelines. With more exposure to stories like this, the audience's expectations shifted too. Now, when someone says multiverse, viewers already know to expect cameos, chaos and cosmic stakes. And filmmakers can lean into the concept more, without pre-explaining any of it. But here again is the problem. The more Hollywood leans into the multiverse, the less any of it matters. First off, death doesn't mean anything anymore. If a character dies, don't worry, just grab another version of them from an alternate timeline. Iron Man sacrificed himself? Well, there's probably a Tony Stark from Earth 414 waiting backstage for you. When every ending can be undone, none of them hit the same. Second, the stakes feel cheap. If there are infinite universes, then why should I care what happens in this one? The writers always end up shouting, the consequences will destroy all universes across all timelines, across all galaxies. But instead of raising the tension, it just feels hollow. The numbers get so big, trillions of lives, infinite timelines, that it becomes abstract. We can't connect to it emotionally. I'd argue that seeing Spider-Man save New York while protecting Aunt May and MJ will always be a more interesting and relatable story than Spider-Man fighting aliens, facing interdimensional beings, Beings and saving the entire universe. Univer universes, plural. It just gets too big for me to relate or care. And third, the stories start to all blur together. Every big crossover turns into the same CGI sludge fest. It's always portal opens, armies collide, familiar characters pop in for their applause lines or famous actors for their cameo. So I'm begging you, just stop using the multiverse as duct tape for lazy writing. Either use it to tell a story that actually matters or just leave the multiverse in the physics textbooks where it belongs. Or if you're one for cameos and want to see a real inspired Marvel masterpiece, I recommend Endgame Battle for the Multiverse on YouTube. The link is also down below in my info box because, well, I just think it's a true editing piece that needs to be appreciated more. What writers need to understand is that once you introduce a multiverse, your story has to be about the multiverse. Same with time travel. You can't just drop it in for a cameo parade or a quick reset button, because it will start to eat your whole story alive. So if you want to use the multiverse as a concept, at least treat it creatively and scientifically with some respect. Consult scientists, or at the very least, do your homework yourself. Understand the basics of quantum mechanics, cosmic inflation and astrophysics. It's not even that hard, I mean, we even managed to get to the surface of the idea, at least in this video. Because right now, writers keep tossing around the world multiverse like it's confetti, and it's lost all meaning. If your characters need to talk about it, don't even call it that. Give it another name that feels rooted in world. For example, look at Kane Parsons' Backrooms project, on which I also have a video on my channel, by the way. The creepy labels for unknown entities, the number of sectors, you could argue that it's just another version of the multiverse. It's built and contained inside a story that isn't relying on a big buzzword. Rather, it feels real because it's creating its own interpretation by careful world building. 
And I do think the concept lends itself to fiction amazingly if done correctly. The science itself is actually fascinating. Could reality be far bigger than the tiny slice we see? And if yes, what does it mean for us? Back in 1950s, physicist Hugh Everett had this bold idea. What if our universe isn't special? What if it's just one branch among countless others? That's not about fan service, it's about questioning our place in existence itself. And that's what makes the real multiverse interesting. Not Spider-Man fighting Spider-Man, but a deeper question. Do we matter in the grand cosmic lottery, or are we just one frequency on the radio dial, humming away in the static of infinity? Is this... am I looking too comfortable? <laughs> Personally, I think we'll always be fascinated by the idea of a multiverse. Human beings can't help but wonder about a path not taken. Because just like time travel or staring up at the stars, I think a core question that will haunt anyone from time to time is the what if. And it's a question that will never stop to inspire storytellers. But here's the case that I want to make at the end of this all. <laughs> a great movie or story isn't made by using an interesting concept. It's made by what you build around it. The characters, the setting, the stakes. For example, Back to the Future didn't reinvent time travel. It just got everything else right. The story was clever, the characters were relatable, and the editing and special effects were creative and pushed boundaries for its time. And that's why the story still works even decades later. And it's also what most multiverse movies miss. Fancy editing, endless verse jumps and CGI editing are cool, don't get me wrong, I love to see it. But only few manage to tell a story that's real and relatable underneath all that. I mean, for as much as I've been shitting on the Marvel movies uh, in this video, I don't actually hate anything that really came before Endgame. I don't even hate Endgame. I think they were very fun and crazy movies. I just hate everything that's so uninspired that comes after that, it just got tacked on with the multiverse sticker. Like I couldn't tell you who the villain or the great evil was in any of those movies other than maybe Thanos. I, I remember Thanos. He was the guy who snapped. <laughs> so the thing is, I don't want to ban multiverse movies. I want to see great ones. Stories that use the idea not as a cheat code, but as a way to make us care more deeply about the characters and the path they are choosing amidst all these possibilities. Because again, at the end of it all, the point of the multiverse isn't that there are infinite possibilities. It's that we only get to live one. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you're still here at the very end, I appreciate it. This video was basically just a dare because I watched the Smurfs movie and it was so ridiculous that I just couldn't keep it in anymore. Um, if you enjoyed it, you might give it a thumbs up or maybe even a thumbs down. You can also argue with me in the comments. I love arguing. <laughs> Let's call it discussing. I love discussing topics like this. And if you want to see more, you could subscribe to the channel because there might come another video that you like. I can't promise that because I make videos about whatever I fancy that month. If it even is a month, I just make videos whenever. <laughs> and as always, have a nice day, have a nice night, wherever you are. And bye, me back on my channel.